Hey and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name's Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's new original movie Black Crab. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favourite Numi Rupees uh, film? She's done quite a lot, probably more than you know of if you check out her IMDb page. It's massive. Generally she does a lot of non-English speaking so you have to read the subtitles which is why I think she goes overlooked sometimes. But definitely worth the while to check out some of those titles. Let's jump in. In a post-apocalyptic world, six soldiers on a covert mission must transport a mysterious package across a frozen archipelago. Now for my wife and I, when we see Nomi Rupees' name in it, that's an immediate kind of tick, I'm gonna give that a go film. She did a, a few Netflix films already, one called So What Happened to Monday, and we loved that. We really loved how it went, the kind of the breakdown. I think she, I think the film itself were, had a uh, Oscar nomination. She's done a number of those that have gone under the radar that I think people, if they go, go and check now, will be like, actually, she's a pretty damn fine actress. So when it comes to her, my wife and I were like, okay, we're going to check this out. And then we add in the adventure that this film is. And basically, we should have absolutely loved it the whole way through and we did like it for three quarters of the film even towards the end but the last five minutes left us going hmm okay now putting all that aside is the film actually any good is the journey any good for me it this is a really weird conundrum normally when it comes to movies i love the beginning first half an hour and i love the last half an hour and it's normally the middle that kind of lags this film it's the middle the chunk of the film that works really well it's the introduction of what's happening in the world they kind of shy away from questions they're basically just saying we're at war. There's two people at war. One is winning more. We're trying to fight for survival. But you kind of don't know who the bad guys are. You don't really ever get to see them. And that'll be explained later on. It also has a weird sci-fi feeling to it. My wife and I kept on expecting there to be like the alien invasion because it has that weird kind of look. Also just has that feeling. Some films just carry that tone. You expect the invasion of the bad guys to be alien. We kept saying to us, ourselves oh I, I guess it's not that film because it isn't so if you if you go in there into this film thinking that same thing it isn't that our main protagonist she is the one we're behind most of because we've seen at the beginning she's been separated from her daughter and now she has the the, the drive for her trying to do complete this mission is being reunited with her daughter and so we're immediately behind it that's the driving force so what we get is a to b team of six leaves and then team has to arrive carrying this package and obviously along the way there's gonna be stuff that happens. The thing about this film, it looks stunning and we kept asking ourselves, how on earth did they film this? Because it looks like everything was filmed on ice in the tundra. Some of these shots though would be impossible to do. So they would have had to do green screen on ice or like filming on an ice rink, but putting green screen around the ice rink, then making everything, or filming on a section of ice where a lake is frozen and then having to do everything in green screen. But it doesn't look like that. Never do I go, that's green screen. It just looks like this is the, a post-apocalyptic world that's kind of frozen over in places. And then we get to see the effects of that as well. So as the adventure progresses, you get to see vast landscapes in eyes or things like, um, if you're thinking day after tomorrow, you're kind of getting the sort of idea of what they're going through. People frozen in ice, boats frozen in ice, little things that they're, they're, they come to that kind of represents uh, the world they used to know, which is very fresh. That works well. There's flashbacks in this that I know they're trying to create backstory for our protagonist to make us care more about the relationship. But I didn't enjoy the flashbacks this time around because it kind of took me out of the adventure and the pace, the tone that they were going for. I was already on board with the, you know, kind of daughter, save the daughter. I didn't need any more, except for one, for an explanation as to how the hell they actually ended up there. And talking about the ending, there is this explanation or an event that happens to our protagonists that made me feel, but that just doesn't really answer. Like, what was the point? I guess I know what the point was, but it just feels unsatisfying to me, the ending. And that's the worst when you go through a really great film, the adventure is good, the dialogue is good, Numi repeats once again portrayal of motherhood and soldier or being thrust into the, the shoes of a soldier once again is fantastic. The way she reacts with her team, she's always uh, on the cusp of, am I part of the team or am I not part of the team? She's always 
kind of on it for her own and it makes you separate the, 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 the likableness to her a little bit because you're like this is your team they're going through as much with you as you are but she's always kind of doing it for herself because she has that motherhood nature where she's a parent and she's gonna do whatever it takes to protect her daughter whether that means making a safer world for her or actually connecting with her again that is what she's going to do you know screw everybody else and i get that but it does separate her from the team which creates an interesting dynamic it was a good way to go with the story because you did need a couple of dynamics to be different so where we have the great cinematography adds to the atmosphere of adventure and tenseness great shoots out very a couple of scenes of a good hand-to-hand -hand combat i think there was one in the opening that I, I thought yeah this is why she's such a good action hero as well she can do those really emotional scenes we have that coming out again with like the motherhood but then when it comes to the action her handling a gun talking to her uh, soldier counterparts that is all believable so like in the roles it feels very fleshed out but then you get to that ending and it leaves you with a hmm I will say the first half an hour with what's going on in the world now with the war that we're experiencing now was a little bit close to home because the way it looks reminded me a lot of the shots I've been seeing on the news um, and it was it was like oh I might have maybe held back on this film for a little bit just it's not representing that at all but it did it did it, it was very close to home um, and you'll understand once you see it uh yeah that's that's my sidetrack on the review for that bit there but anyway let me know your thoughts down below i'm going to give this three out of five nicholas cages probably would have gone four if it stuck the landing let me know your thoughts once you've seen it thanks so much for watching but most of all until next time remember live long on tuesday